Hi, I'm Dean Ho, and this is the Automation Station. Today we have Kim Gamble, who is the president and CEO of Microliter Analytical Supplies. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. So what are some of the leading products from your company that you're most excited about? A microliter is a consumable supplier for the auto samplers that are used on the, on the GCs and LCs. Uh, at Lab Automation, we introduced um, a way to do sample prep, solid phase extraction and filtration, general HPLC filtration, using the auto sampler. Uh, the instrument companies have asked for a sample prep solution for some years, and we've developed a device that, that is miniature. It's uh, 3 to 25 mig bed mass volumes. Uh, that allows the uh, the instrument to actually, well, during the downtime of an analytical run, to prep the next sample. So it's a serial-based product, but the downtime is only the first sample preparation, and then while the instrument is analyzing that sample, we're prepping the next one. What we're showing is ITSP, Instruments Top Sample Prep, uh, and what we're using is an auto sampler, standard auto sampler for an LC or GC, to do solid phase extraction or general filtration. Uh, what we're going to show you today is actually a, a single elution SPE method where we use an HTC PAL uh, uh, from CTC Analytics and we will condition the device with these solvents back here. We will have a waste uh, location here where we'll move our device and then we'll have elution solvents here. So the idea is to be able to, to pick this device up and move it anywhere on the platform to be able to perform your conditioning steps, your loading of your raw sample, and then your final elution and injecting onto the valve. So what you see now is we are fixing to load the raw sample. It can be from a closed vial. It can be from a 96-well plate, uh, just about any source, an EPA vial. Uh, you just have to have the tray designated for that size. You will load the sample over a waste receptacle. PAL has several locations that we can fix that to. We'll load the raw sample and then we will uh, elute into the wells on the back plate. Sample volume's up to you, really. We have bed masses from uh, 3 to 25 mg. It's very versatile. You're scaling down. It's comparable to the 96 well plate extraction. What we're doing now is we've loaded the raw sample and we're cleaning the syringe. We will then pick up a uh, solution of solvent and wash the column itself. Then that, once that's complete, we will load another elution solvent and then pick up the device and move it over this tray here for the final elution. ITSP is extremely useful for methods that run that are required just in time. You can do a variety of methods. Uh, it's controlled by the PAL software and then we integrate that into your your system as well. We will help you by providing you with raw devices that you can do manually and then we will write the automation and come to your lab to show you the demo and you can actually run samples during the demo to, to replicate your manual method that we've we've transferred. So now we're washing the column. This is the last position. It'll stay in the waste receptacle. Now we're picking up the actual elution volume. And then we'll go back and pick up the device then. And that's really the uniqueness of ITSP is that we can pick up the device and move it around the deck to do these types of extractions. Uh, we see generally solvent reductions of 70% solvent reduction. Uh, the labor is uh, obviously non-existent except for prep of the actual supernatant if you need to do that. We found urine to be a great platform. Blood and plasma and serum has to be cleaned up before we can use it. It's uh, good for uh, any kind of water analysis, things of that sort. QA, QC of raw material and finished goods is another application. So what you saw there was we uh, actually did the elution into that well. We discarded the device because you no longer need it, and it will pick up and inject right onto the valve. So 
The idea is to be able to elute onto the valve or, or inject onto the valve, and then within the analytical runtime of the instrument, we are actually prepping the next sample. It is serial, but there is no downtime, basically, except for the first sample prep. And there's the final injection. So what are some of the key benefits offered by your technology? Um, what we offer is uh, we're bypassing first the liquid handlers, which is a good, good step for us. But we also scale down methods, 60% savings in solvents, uh, really important right now with the shortages. Uh, we're also reducing the footprint in the, on the bench space that's required because we're utilizing the auto sampler that is already there. Uh, one of the main benefits that we have is if you have an existing CTC Analytics PAL, you can retrofit that machine for less than $2,000 to do sample prep. So reduction in solvents, uh, reduction in labor, reduction in bench space. Uh, we feel like it's a, a really a timely product for this market right now. How does your experience at lab automation impact your ability to dialogue with the lab automation community and to showcase the benefits of your technology? Um, people that are coming to this show generally are looking for ways to improve productivity, productivity in their lab. Uh, we believe that by offering consumables that enhance the performance of these instruments that we're, we're offering an additional benefit to those instrument companies that are, that are selling these items, but also to the customer base. And this is a great forum for us to come and show our product in action. We actually can uh, run it right on the, on the show floor. And I think we get a real positive response because the purchasing people and the, the key players for buying automation are at this show. So uh, it's a real good market, great target market for lab managers, instrument companies, and those that are developing products for the, the automation. So it's, uh, it's been one of the best shows that we do. Great. So what are some of the new technologies in 2009 that the lab automation community can look forward to from your company? Well, um, right now we have developed most of the hardware to adapt to most of the instruments out there. We've uh, worked hard on getting our software compatible to where the conversions are easier. Uh, we've worked out a lot of the automation, actual move techniques and things of that sort. And we're in the process of producing application notes that are representative for the various markets. We'd like to have representative applications for pharmaceutical, environmental, clinical, forensic tox, uh, just, you know, QA, QC of uh, raw material and, and uh, finished goods for, for both laboratories and industrial type labs. So um, we're just trying to, to develop data now and show that you know, we are linear and uh, we can also scale down. So that's, that's really important to us. Great. So what are some of the key general trends in lab automation that you see for 2009? Um, for 2009 specifically, the economy. I mean, I think we all have to be aware that capital budgets and personnel, we have to do more things with the staff that we have, and we have to be more productive. We have to uh, to uh, address the shortages of solvents and things of that market, and I think we have a timely product for that, that particular application. Uh, green technology is very important, so anytime you can reduce a hazardous material, blood samples, things of that sort, or solvents that have to be disposed, uh, you give yourself a savings in the economy, but you're also helping the environment as well, and that's one benefit we believe that we have with our product. That's great, Kim. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks, Thanks. for joining us. Great. Appreciate Thank you it. Very much.